Namaste and welcome to Daily News Simplified, the what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today we would be analyzing the Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper of 26th April 2018. Now let us begin. Now we have taken this article from page 7. Now what this article talks about is the second edition of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. Now the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan has already been asked in your UPSC prelims examination in the prelims of 2017. So what we'll do is that we'll get a better understanding of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan and what changes have been made in the second edition of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan 2.0. Now the first purpose of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan is that the scheme is aimed at making higher education institutions provide solutions for the problem of villages wherein the scheme intends to build a coordinated approach where the government and institutions can work together to facilitate rural development. And it is through this coordinated approach that the scheme plans to help villages attain 100% school result, create jobs, increase rural income, among other factors to facilitate rural development. Now within this scheme, both technical and non-technical institutions have been invited to build systems in villages as per their strengths. Now the concerned ministry for the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan is the Ministry of Human Resource and Development. Now the process through which the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan would be implemented is through the faculties and students of the higher education institutes that have become part of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan and they will carry out studies of living conditions in their adopted village and then assess the local problems and needs of their adopted village. And wherein, after assessing their local problem and needs, they would work out a process in implementation of various government schemes that would be able to solve their problems and needs. And therein, prepare a workable action plan for the implementation of the various government schemes that can solve the local problem and needs of their adopted village. Now, these educational institutions would be expected to work in coordination with the district administration, the local panchayat and the elected representatives. And this coordination would therefore ensure that such knowledge as prepared by the educational institutions would make their way into the development programs in other nearby rural areas. Now hopefully up till here you have understood the purpose of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, the concerned ministry of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan and the process through which educational institutions and the local government would facilitate the objectives and aims of the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. Now let us understand about Unnat Bharat Abhiyan 2.0. Now the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan 2.0 will have extended participation to 750 public and private educational institutions wherein these institutions have been selected on a challenge mode and would adopt a cluster of villages and would gradually expand their outreach over time. Now with regards to UPSC main syllabus, it would be placed in GS Paper 2 in the subsection Government Policies for Development in Various Sectors and also development processes and the role of institutions. And so now with this, we move on to the next article. Now we have taken this editorial from page 9. Now what this article talks about is that nuclear politics has deteriorated. And with regards to this, the author has given several examples. Wherein the first example given by the author is that the terms of negotiations on nuclear issue between North Korea and South Korea remains opaque. The second example given by the author is that the US-Russia rivalry has fueled a race in nuclear weapons modernization. And moreover, India, Pakistan and China are also modernizing their nuclear weapons. And lastly, the author gives the example of the Iran nuclear deal which might be dumped by the United States. Now hopefully up till here you have understood that according to the author, the nuclear politics in the world has deteriorated. And with regards to this, the author has given the example of the upcoming summit between North Korea and South Korea, wherein the terms of negotiations on the nuclear issue still remains unclear, wherein the US and Japan want complete denuclearization of North Korea, while South Korea wants first normalization of talks and then a more elongated discussion on the North Korean nuclear issue. Moreover, the author has given the example of the US-Russia rivalry, which has fueled a race in nuclear weapons modernization. And moreover, India, Pakistan and China are also modernizing their nuclear weapons. And lastly, the dumping of the Iran nuclear deal by Donald Trump would further deteriorate the international nuclear politics. Now with regards to this, the author has given several recommendations that India should make a credible intervention in improving international nuclear politics. And this is because India would be able to showcase itself as a responsible nuclear power. Now hopefully up till here you have also understood the recommendation of the author with regards to India 
where India should lead in improving nuclear politics so as to showcase itself as a responsible nuclear power. Now this article and the explanation given in this section is important with regards to UPSC mains examination. In GS paper 2 in the international relations section, more specifically effect of politics of developed and developing countries on India's interest. And so now with this we move on to the next article. Now we have taken this article from page 10. Now the reason this article is in the news is because the union cabinet has approved the extension of the national bamboo mission till 2019-2020. So now with regards to this article, what we'll do is understand about the National Bamboo Mission from the perspective of your upcoming prelims examination. Now the National Bamboo Mission is a 100% centrally sponsored scheme for promoting holistic growth of the bamboo sector. And the National Bamboo Mission intends for area-based and regionally differentiated strategy to increase the area of bamboo cultivation and also to increase the area of its marketing. And the scheme is aimed at addressing complete value chain from the bamboo farmers to the bamboo industry. Now the National Bamboo Mission is part of the National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture and it is being implemented by state bamboo development agencies or the forest development agencies within their respective state or the union territory. Now this scheme intends to benefit bamboo farmers and their associated artisans and bamboo industries. Now the scheme proposes to bring 1 lakh hectare under bamboo plantation and roughly benefiting around 1 lakh farmers. Now the first objective of the National Bamboo Mission is to increase the area under bamboo plantation in non-forest government and private lands. The second objective of the National Bamboo Mission is to supplement farmer income wherein farmers would be able to plant bamboo which they earlier were not able to due to government regulations and through the selling of this bamboo that they have planted within their agriculture lands, they can supplement their income. And the third and the final objective is to improve post-harvest management through treatment and seasoning units. Now hopefully up till here you've understood the features, beneficiaries and objectives of the National Bamboo Mission and it becomes important because under the union budget of 2018-19, bamboo has been called the green gold. And also, the present government has also restructured the National Bamboo Mission for its commercial exploitation within the Northeast. And it is within this regard that the National Bamboo Mission becomes relevant with regards to your upcoming prelims examination. And so now with this, we move on to the next article. Now we have taken this article from the editorial page on page 8. Now what this article talks about is the upcoming Narendra Modi and Xi Jinping meeting in Wuhan, China. Now the focus of this article is that the author has cautioned against having high expectations from the Narendra Modi and Xi Jinping meet in Wuhan, China. And the author has cautioned against it because similar summits in the past have failed to result in positive outcomes. And with regards to this, the author has given the example of the Agra summit that happened between President Pervez Musharraf and Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee, which failed in having positive outcomes, or Jawaharlal Nehru and Zhu in life. Summit in 1960, after which the 1962 war between India and China occurred. And in similar terms, the author has given several other examples of failed summits. Now, another reason given by the author that the issues between India and China, such as the boundary dispute, balance of trade, CPEC issue, Molana Masood issue, among others, are multitude in nature and are also of complex nature. So hopefully up till here you have understood that the author has cautioned against having high expectations from the President Narendra Modi and Xi Jinping meet in Wuhan, China. And the author has cautioned against it because similar summits in the past have failed to result in positive outcomes such as the Agra summit between President Pervez Musharraf and Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee or the Jawaharlal Nehru and Zhu Enlai meet of 1960. And apart from this, the issues between India and China are multitude in nature such as the CPEC issue, Molana Masood issue, boundary dispute and each issue within their own virtue are complex in nature and therefore the author has cautioned against having high expectations from the upcoming meet to have a positive outcome on all these issues. Now apart from this, the author has given several recommendations wherein the first recommendation by the author is that issues raised in the summit should be of bilateral in nature such as of trade boundary issues, among other. And according to the author, India and China should avoid discussing multilateral issues such as the CPEC issue, Belt Road Initiative, among other. And so according to the author, the India and China should form a dialogue process for future solutions. And with regards to this, the author has given the example of the composite dialogue process which was launched by IK Gujral in 1990 and which was followed by Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Manmohan Singh and most recently by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. 
And similarly, the Rajiv Gandhi and Lee Peng Summit of 1988 paved the way for 1993 agreement on the agreement on the line of actual control. And in similar terms, the author has recommended that India and China should form a dialogue process which would lead to future solutions. Now hopefully you have also understood the recommendations of the author that the issues raised in the summit should be those which are between India and China and therefore bilateral in nature such as trade, boundary dispute among other. And that India and China should avoid multilateral issues which involve a third country or a third institution such as CPEC, Belt Road Initiative, Quadrilateral Group among other. And finally, according to the author, India and China should form a dialogue process that can lead to future solutions. And with regards to this, the author has given the example of the composite dialogue process that was launched by I.K. Gujral in 1990 between India and Pakistan or the Rajiv Gandhi Lee Peng Summit which actually led to the agreement on the line of actual control. And in similar terms, President Narendra Modi and Xi Jinping should form a dialogue process upon which the issues between India and China could be solved in the future. Now as you know, the summit is an ongoing summit and we have to wait for the outcomes of this summit. And so the arguments raised by the author and the recommendations should be seen as transitionary in nature and therefore we have to wait for the outcomes of the Wuhan summit. And so with this, we move on to the next article. Now we have taken this editorial from page 8. Now what this article talks about is that AFSPA or the Armed Forces Special Powers Act has been reduced in area coverage but not within its purview wherein the article gives the example of the recent revocation of ASPA, Meghalaya and its dilution in area coverage in Arunachal Pradesh. However, according to the article, ASPA continues to cover the whole of Nagaland and parts of Manipur and Assam. However, it was withdrawn from Tripura in 2015. Now, hopefully up till here you have understood that according to this article, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act or ASPA has been reduced in its area coverage wherein it has been recently been revoked in Meghalaya and its ambit has been reduced in Arunachal Pradesh. And similarly, ASPA continues to exist in whole of Nagaland and in parts of Manipur and Assam and moreover, it has been withdrawn from Tripura in 2015. Now the article further states that the Jeevan Reddy Committee of 2005 gave the recommendation of repealing ASPA and moreover, to amend the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act to tackle insurgency and conflict. And moreover, the Supreme Court in 2016 had asserted that the legal protection given under ASPA is not absolute, wherein the Supreme Court had asserted that the armed forces cannot escape investigation for excesses committed in the discharge of their duties even in disturbed areas and thereby ordered a probe into specific cases. And moreover, the government of India in 2018 had asserted to make ASPA operationally effective and humane. Now hopefully up till here you have also understood that according to this article, the Jeevan Reddy committee in 2005 had recommended to repeal ASPA and further recommended that the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act should be amended to tackle insurgency and conflict. And moreover, the Supreme Court in 2016 said that the armed forces cannot escape investigation for excesses committed in the discharge of their duties even on those areas which are under ASPA and wherein it asserted that the legal protection under ASPA is not absolute. And lastly, the government in 2018 had asserted that it would make ASPA operationally effective and humane and thereby the article has been asserted that to make ASPA more humane wherein ASFA continues to be reduced in area coverage but not within its purview to make it more humane. Now hopefully you have understood the focus of this article. And so now with this we move on to the next article. Now we have taken this article from page 1. Now what this article talks about is that the law ministry has cleared the name of Indu Malhotra as a Supreme Court judge. Now the elevation of Indu Malhotra as a Supreme Court judge and how judges are appointed in the Supreme Court has already been covered in an earlier DNS video of 12th January 2018 and you can refer to that video to get an in-depth understanding of this article and a link to which would be provided in the description section. Now with this we come to an end in the analysis of today's paper. Now we move on to the question for today. 